Welcome everyone to 2023 Campus Compact Outlook. My name is Mary Grant and I'm president of Massachusetts College of Art and Design and I'm also president of the Campus Compact Board of Directors. And on behalf of the board and the staff at Campus Compact, I'm delighted to welcome you to have a chance to look at some of the exciting things that are happening at Campus Compact. I also want to thank you for the work that you do every day. The work that's happening right now as many of us begin our academic years is so important to civic engagement, democracy building, and education of the students who are on our campus and who are heading out into our communities. I can't thank you enough for this important work as we look at how we teach, how we engage, how we learn, and how we impact the communities that we get to call home every day, wherever our institutions may be. So thank you again for this important, life-changing, inspirational work. And I do hope that many of you will be able to join us in April in Denver when we have our national meeting to engage and do this work together in person. Thanks so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful academic year. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Bobby Lauer, the president of Campus Compact. This is our second annual Member Resources Outlook. Um, and we're just so excited to bring to you today just all of the work that we've been doing. As the longest running and largest organization exclusively dedicated to higher education's community and civic engagement mission, we're gonna share with you today updates, announcements about all of our programs, networks, tools, and talk about the work we're doing to support you, your students, communities, and institutions. Our theme for this year is now is the moment. It's also the theme of our annual conference, Compact 24, which we'll talk a little bit more about towards the end of today but it's a framing for our entire team, an ethos from which we're operating. We don't just feel a sense of urgency, we are acting with urgency. This includes building new partnerships, reconceiving how we deliver value to support the entire institution, taking new approaches to fostering deep and impactful connections, and being innovative and aggressive in fighting to hold up and advance the core values we ground ourselves in, all with an aims towards creating a more just and equitable future. We, like you, Know that the stakes are very high for our communities, our democracy, and future generations. Higher education has a necessary and critical role to play in addressing our biggest challenges from climate change to mental health to racial wealth gaps, and community and civic engagement is the path forward. Over the past year, we've offered more programming than ever before, reaching faculty, staff, senior administrators, and students from all over the country. While our virtual programming is growing significantly, we have loved getting out there, seeing people in real life. We've hosted dozens of in-person events, ranging from affinity network convenings to Newman Civic Fellows. Thank you to everyone who came out, hosted, and contributed. I've had the privilege of serving on the Compact team for 18 months, and it's been 18 months of constant growth and evolution. Today, our team is 26 people strong, with a few more folks joining us soon. We've invested in our capacity to ensure that we can meet the moment and be in the best position to serve you and your institutions. Our staff are spread across 17 states and stretch from Florida to Oregon. We're gonna be doing more work this year to facilitate on the ground connections in our own local communities. And we look forward to seeing you. Today's presentation will be organized across these four quadrants, which frame how we work here at Campus Compact. To truly advance the public mission of higher ed, each is necessary, and we're excited to be growing and deepening our impact across the board. Today, you're gonna to hear from several members of our team. We'll be sharing a lot of dates and calls to action, but don't worry about jotting everything down. We're gonna be sending a very comprehensive and long follow-up email with all of the next steps to engage in what you hear about today. Look for that email in your inbox next week. First up, we're gonna focus on empowering institutions and communities, beginning with our affinity networks. The first affinity network we're gonna highlight is Truckin, or the Research University Civic Engagement Network. Established in 2008, Truckin works to advance civic engagement and engage scholarship among R1 institutions. They all share a fundamental commitment to leveraging their resources, skills, and energy to addressing the most challenging issues in society. This is a growing network. Today, we have 45 Campus Compact R1 members in Truckin, including 10 new members from this past year. We've also created a leadership committee this past year, and I wanna thank Nirja, Renee, Laurel, James, and Shalom all for their incredible contributions in advancing Truckin's agenda and impact. Truckin's a collegial network of members that connect both virtually and in person. 
This coming year, you can look forward to several in-person opportunities. First, the very beloved annual trucking convening. Last year, we were lucky enough to be at the University of Minnesota in Twin Cities. And this year, we will be hosting our annual convening at the University of Colorado Boulder prior to Compact 24. The convening will take place April 6th through 8th and will be opening registration in December. We're also really excited today to announce a new site visit program, Truck and Showcases. These in-person campus hosted convenings will focus on specific emerging topics, issues, or opportunities. These are intentionally small and will prioritize team-based experiences. Our first Truck and Showcase will be hosted by the University of Pennsylvania's Netter Center, November 16th and 17th, and it will focus on their internationally recognized work on building academic partnerships with university-assisted community schools. Registration will be open when you receive this follow-up email, and we can't wait to see you in Philadelphia. We have several more in the pipeline and hope to offer at least two truck and showcases a year. So please reach out to me if you'd like to explore hosting one in the future. In addition to in-person programming, we also have a growing slate of virtual programming for Truckin. We're planning to do quarterly network gatherings this coming year, with our next one scheduled for September 27th, featuring author Devarian Baldwin, where we'll be guided by his recent book, In the Shadow of the Ivory Tower. We already have 140 Truckin members signed up, but registration is still open. Lastly, but definitely not least, are the Truckin Sustained Conversation Groups. These meet throughout the year. I want to thank the dedicated facilitators for each of our truck and, truck and sustained conversation groups on student learning and engagement with for a challenged democracy, Nancy Thomas and Renee Brown, supporting equity focused community based research, Clayton Hurd and Miranda Ward, and cultivating community voice, Doug Barrera. I also want to let you all know there's going to be a compact wide survey coming from Doug's group focused on a topic we hear questions about all the time which is how are institutions incorporating community partners into leadership and advisory positions? And what are the policies or operational procedures for compensating and recognizing community partners as co-educators and co-researchers? The survey is coming out in October and will, be, and will be sent across the entire Compact membership. Next up is Natalie, who will highlight two more Compact Affinity Networks. Good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Natalie. I work primarily with member engagement and I'm part of the team spearheading our student work, which you'll hear more about later. Now I'd like to talk more about communities and networks. After a year of landscape analysis, partner conversations and focus groups, Campus Compact is excited to announce the Rural Engagement Network as our newest affinity network. Campus Compact has developed a year-long plan to engage and support the work of rural identifying campuses in their community engagement work. The plan is broken into four sections. Opportunities for peer learning, advocating for funding to support rural campuses, highlighting the impacts of higher education community engagement in rural areas, and promoting opportunities for innovation. The Rural Engagement Network will meet quarterly this fall, starting this fall, with the support of our Rural Engagement Fellow, Stephanie Lesperin. Stephanie is the Chief Strategy Officer at Campus Compact for New Hampshire, where she has led rural initiatives for New England members. We're excited to have her continue her fellowship for a second year to bring her expertise to all Compact members. Campus Compact will also be hosting a rural speaker series with featured speakers from partners like the Department of Education, Partners in Rural Impacts, and the National Rural Education Association. In addition, we will highlight topics such as DEI in rural communities, student basic needs support, and more. Lastly, we'll be highlighting rural campuses in our newsletter and communications throughout the year. More information will be coming to your inbox soon, but in the meantime, if, you're more in if you are interested in being a leader in Compact's rural work, please don't hesitate to reach out. In continuing to build our networks, uh, we are excited to advance the success of the Community College Network. First, let's hear from our co Community College Fellow, Deanna. Greetings, my name is Deanna Villanueva Saucedo and I'm an Associate Vice Chancellor at Maricopa Community Colleges. I am super excited to be supporting a Community College Network with Campus Compact. As those of us in the field know, community colleges serve very distinct populations, and oftentimes there's various levels of staffing and support given to civic engagement efforts. 
So by calling together our community college network, we can support one another, share ideas, best practices, common challenges, find resources, and connect with one another in order to increase the strength of our field in regards to civic engagement. Be super excited to work with you this year and welcome to the network. Thank you for all the exciting information, Deanna. Uh, she hosted the first Community College Practitioner Network conversation this morning with more than 20 community college practitioners about best practices and engaging faculty. Deanna will be hosting monthly Community College Network meetings. Topics will include identifying champions in leadership, Carnegie classification, data collection and storytelling and more. In addition to our practitioner network, we're also advancing research-driven practices and tools. With support from the Lumina Foundation, Campus Compact will have a team of research fellows working on important community college issues led by Lena Jones from Minneapolis College. Compact is releasing Lena's white paper, As the Dust Settles, a snapshot of civic and community engagement at community colleges later this month. Based on the findings from Lena's research, she will be working with a dynamic group of leaders to create new tools, resources, and research. They include John Unger, who is Workforce Innovation Director and Engineering, Manufacturing, and Technology Faculty at Blue Ridge Community and Technical College, who will be looking at basic needs and trauma as it relates to community college students and community engagement. Bernice Rosas Belmonte, Director of the Center for Civ Community and Civic Engagement at Mesa Community College, will be reimagining community engagement programming and the resources and assessments used in community colleges for that purpose. She hopes to create a resource hub to support work throughout the network. Matthew Oakes is a professor of English at Rock Valley Community College. He will explore the intersection of civic engagement, anti-racist pedagogy, and universal design for learning. And lastly, Jason Ledgett, Assistant Professor of Behavioral Sciences at uh, Kingsborough Community College, will be looking at the connection between the institution, what institutions say they want to achieve, how they achieve that, and where are the gaps. All this research and more will be explored at a new Community College Institute, Advancing Civic Engagement in Community Colleges, we'll, uh, which will be held at Compact 24. <laughs> we will hold an information session about the Institute next month in hopes of incorporating network needs as we build the agenda. Next on our agenda, we will learn more about Compact's growing AmeriCorps program, starting with Eric to talk about the Campus Renaissance Corps. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Lugo, and I have the honor of serving with Campus Compact as the National Director for College Renaissance Corps. As a new national leadership and service program of the Compact, CR Corps is on a mission to empower talent by elevating the voice of community college students, pursuing high demand fields through a national service experience. Reimagine industry by using next generation social and digital technology to inform and inspire a new pipeline of talent for high demand industries and transform community by connecting underrepresented individuals to college and workforce training that leads to economic mobility. Our work at CR Corps is anchored by funding from AmeriCorps State and National, including the national office, as well as various state commissions. CR Corps is centered on shifting the narrative around higher education and building with intention and initiative to support the strategic goals of community colleges while meeting the workforce and financial needs of community college students. We believe that community colleges are essential partners in building a more inclusive local and national economy. They provide an accessible path to higher education and economic mobility and community college students are untapped talent with the potential to be leaders in high demand industries and their communities. We also believe that national service is workforce development. Here's how CR Corps works. We engage community college students enrolled in high demand industry programs to act as CR Corps industry ambassadors for their field of study in their local community. Uh, industry, CR Corps industry ambassadors and leverage in-person engagement and social media to recruit classmates, adult learners, opportunity youth, and high school students to enroll in similar fields of study at their community college. And during the program, CR Corps industry ambassadors learn directly from industry experts, participate in professional development workshops and networking experiences, and engage in community service projects. 
Our goal is to partner with community colleges that share our vision to empower talent, reimagine industry, and transform communities. We work together to identify students who can become CR Core industry ambassadors, showcase CR Core industry ambassadors in their recruitment efforts to close enrollment gaps in high demand industry programs, inform CR Core industry ambassadors about the different departments and resources available to them and the prospective students they're working with. And lastly, identify employer partners committed to changing the narrative around their industry. On September 18th, CR Core will launch its inaugural cohort in Texas in partnership with the Houston Community College. We expect to launch in Denver in partnership with Arapahoe Community College and the Community College of Denver in 2024. And we are currently planning to scale in September of 2024 in markets that include Chicago, Connecticut, Detroit, New Orleans, and North Carolina. We welcome conversations with community college leaders and partners in these cities and states and are also open to discussion in lots of other places, including Arizona, Florida, Indiana, Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Ohio. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Now we'll hear from Sally on the Campus Climate Action Corps. Great, thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. My name is Sally Slavensky, and I'm the Program Director for the Campus Climate Action Corps. Well, those of us at Campus Compact are aware that there has been a commitment to environmental stewardship among higher education institutions for many years. As we all know, there's a special urgency to the growing climate crisis as we have seen this summer with record-breaking heat and extreme weather events around the world. The good news is that the Campus Climate Action Corps provides a wonderful opportunity for higher education to rise to the challenge and to do even more to engage our students, campuses, and communities in climate action. So what is the Climate Action Corps? So the Campus Climate Action Corps is an initiative that through campus and community partnerships will increase energy efficiency and at-risk ecosystems in underserved communities. Through this program, we'll utilize a network of over, of over 100 AmeriCorps members who will be placed at campus host sites throughout the Midwest, the Northeast and Southeast regions. The goal of these teams is to mobilize students, campuses and communities to advance knowledge about climate change, increase energy conservation, and reduce carbon emissions. And more specifically, what our AmeriCorps teams will be doing is they'll be raising public awareness and address urgent climate issues on campuses and in underserved communities. They'll be lowering energy use and energy costs for low-income households. They'll work to improve at-risk ecosystems and they'll be leveraging volunteers from the local community and even student volunteers to support our Campus Climate Action Corps activities. We're also pleased to report that we're actively recruiting Campus Climate Action Corps host sites right now from our network of campuses. And host sites will host small teams of AmeriCorps members to contribute to sustainability efforts on campus and in local communities. And there are also some great host site benefits for um, campus host sites in terms of advancing community campus partnerships to address pressing environmental issues, to deepen community engagement efforts in underserved areas, to enhance skill building, community engagement, and hands-on learning opportunities for your students. And AmeriCorps members also receive living stipends and education awards and trainings, especially for the full-time, the full-time members uh, receive that living stipend as well as half-time and uh, three-quarter time positions as well. And the great news is it also helps to make a positive difference for the environment. We have some upcoming host animation sessions coming up in September and in October for those of you that are interested in learning more. And we hope you'll join us. I'm going to now turn it over to Lindsay to talk about AmeriCorps VISTA. Thanks, Sally. Um, hi, all. I'm Lindsay Revisa, the director for our VISTA program. Uh, so Campus Compact hosts a national cohort of AmeriCorps VISTA members who are placed for a full-time year of service with our member campuses to work on a capacity building project that positively impacts low-income low -income communities or students. Projects can focus um, on a number of different areas, including college access, basic needs, such as food security and housing, K-12 success, job readiness, and more. To give you an idea of what the VISTA program can accomplish, here's some examples. At Indi Indiana University South Bend, our VISTA Stephanie is working on developing curriculum and outreach for middle school parents to increase college readiness and awareness of post-secondary pathways for their children. 
At SUNY Buffalo State, Jake just started his VISTA term of service, following up on VISTA members VISTA member Ava's work of recruiting volunteers to provide food security and financial literacy services to low-income community members through local organizations. And this year at White Mountains Community College, Kristen is working to increase low-income student success by developing research resources and outreach materials that focus on engaging digital learners. This can be a great opportunity to get a project off the ground, expand the capacity of a current project, or increase the reach of a project that you have happening. We're going to be opening our application for the 24-25 school year in mid-October, and we'll be hosting info sessions uh, on the days on the screen, so please sign up to learn more. Um, as you can see from our current programming, Compact places a lot of value in partnering with AmeriCorps. Running national service programming within the context of higher education is a unique experience. And this year, we're going to be continuing to gather a network of higher ed based AmeriCorps sponsors to share resources and to collaborate. Our first meeting is going to be October 4th and is open to both members and non members. Uh, we hope to see some of you there. That closes up our AmeriCorps uh, program information, and we're going to be transitioning to highlighting our growing body of work focused on engaging directly with students. Up next, Will will share some exciting updates and opportunities. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. I'm Will Brummett, the new Student Engagement Manager for Campus Compact. At Campus Compact, we have an exciting year of engaging students ahead. Campus Compact is committed to significantly enhancing and expanding student civic engagement work nationwide. Along with our partners at the Allstate and Lumina Foundations, Campus Compact has committed significant resources, time, and staffing this year to ensure that your campuses and student leaders have more resources, connections, and opportunities to support your student leaders as both the change makers they are today and the civic leaders of tomorrow. To begin, we are going to be continuing our pillar student program, the Newman Civic Fellowship which is a year-long student leadership fellowship where member institutions can nominate one outstanding civically engaged student to rep represent your institution for this year-long leadership program. This historic fellowship program provides monthly trainings and resources for student leaders, a professional mentorship program, and an annual convening of student change makers from across the country. In fact, this October, we are bringing together over 140 student leaders from across the country for our annual convening in Boston. This year, we also have two new and exciting opportunities related to the New Civic Fellowship Program that we want to make sure you're aware of. First, thanks to the generous support of our partners, the Allstate Foundation, New Civic Fellows will have the opportunity this year to apply for many grants up to $5,000 to support the implementation of a social action project in their community. Applica applications will be launching in early October, and selected recipients will present about their impact projects at a New Civic Fellow Showcase in May 2024. Second, Thanks to the support from our partners at the Lumina Foundation, Campus Compact will award five member campuses up to $5,000 to participate in the Campus Innovation Cohort. The Campus Innovation Cohort will work together to enhance the Newman Civic Fellowship Program and be a part of cutting edge work to deepen student civic and leadership engagement nationwide. This is a great opportunity to support students, student development and civic engagement and to empower your staff to contribute to the field as national field leaders. Applications are currently live on our website and all members are encouraged to apply by September 15th. Finally, if you already have a, if you don't have a Newman Fellow for this year or you already have a great student lined up for next year, be on the lookout for our 2024-2025 Newman Civic Fellow application that will be launched in late October. Today, we are also excited to announce that our newest program, the Student Design Fellowship, will begin starting next week. Starting next week, we're going to be seeking five to seven student design fellows from across member institutions for a paid two-year fellowship experience. Student design fellows will work alongside Campus Compact staff, member campuses, and national partners to design initiatives dedicated to enhancing student civic development across the country. Benefits of this fellowship are going to include a $2,500 per year stipend, opportunities to present at conferences, including Compact 24 in Denver, and trainings from the Campus Compact team, including both online and in-person gatherings. This fellowship opportunity is open to both undergraduate and graduate students. Students from community colleges and minority serving institutions are also highly encouraged to apply. Student Design Fellows will also be working with our new Student Engagement Research Fellow, Dr. Sana Hyun a senior researcher specializing in student leadership at the Tisch College of Civic Life at Tufts University. 
Sana will be developing assessments, hosting focus groups, and creating campus compact specific tools and benchmarks to ensure that we are making evidence-based decisions going forward with our student programming at Campus Compact. Together, the Student Engagement Research Fellow and the Student Design Team will help shape what Campus Compact student civic leadership work looks like moving forward. We are excited at Campus Compact to be expanding our student engagement work. If you have additional ideas or questions about Campus Compact student engagement, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or our team. And if you know any all-star staff or alumni looking to get involved in student civic engagement work nationally, we are excited to, to be hiring a student engagement coordinator this fall. Please be on the lookout in the coming weeks and help us spread the word to great candidates to work with our Compact team. Now I'll pass it to Nicole Springer, who will share more about how Campus Compact is supporting individuals. Thank you, Will. Hi, I'm Nicole, Director of Institutional Capacity Building for Campus Compact, and I have the joy of supporting the Compact's work in professional development, scholarship, and leading our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. As a professional home for community engagement practitioners in the field, Campus Compact is committed to providing a holistic approach to our professional development programs and initiatives. We believe in meeting people where they are and providing them with opportunities for skill development, encouraging individuals to be the best versions of themselves as they grow their capacity and leverage their strengths and the strengths of those around them, showing them how they can shape their own leadership trajectory, building communities for peer exchange and learning, and doing all of this with a focus on centering equity, inclusion, and belonging. Now that's a lot to talk about in a short amount of time. So as I tell you a little bit more about what we are offering this year for our transformational professional development initiatives, listen closely for these goals woven throughout the descriptions. This year was our inaugural Change Makers Retreat hosted by the University of Nebraska Omaha. With the help of a design team from across the country, we were able to create an agenda that provided space for participants to identify their individual strengths while focusing on collective leadership strategies. Their connection to each other and the compact did not end with the retreat. Members of this inaugural cohort wanted more time together to continue their peer coaching, explore collaborations, and work on their long-term goals. We are providing them with space to do that both virtually and at the national conference. If you're interested in learning more about what these kind of leadership develop what this kind of leadership development looks like, join me at one of the information sessions coming up in November and another one in February. We look forward to bringing more peer coaching to the field, so stay tuned for those opportunities as well. Campus Compact's Engaged Scholars Initiative continues to advance the field while centering equity. This transfer transformative one-year leadership and professional development program is designed to bring together a diverse group of practitioner scholars from across the country to deepen their critical community engaged scholarship. For the past three years, we have offered this opportunity to early career faculty and staff with great success. Our current cohort of 14 recently had their opening retreat at the University of Nebraska Omaha, and they are excited to continue their work together this year. Starting in January 2024, a new cohort will begin their journey under the direction of Emily Fopp, Professional Development Manager. This ESI experience is tailored specifically to support peer-to-peer -peer mentoring for community engagement professionals who are nearing mid-career. We're opening up the call for applications for this cohort today, so join us for our information sessions to learn more about the different Engaged Scholars initiatives and find out which one is right for you. The first session is on September 19th, at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. We also continue to support leadership development in a, in a couple different ways. First, we are excited to share that Byron White, Associate Provost for Urban Research and Community Engagement at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, is joining us this year as the Campus Compact Executive Leadership and Institutional Transformation Fellow. As a fellow, Byron will be writing a book Compact will publish in the fiscal year 25, tentatively titled Engaging to Survive, a Community-Centric Roadmap to Higher Education's Future. To contribute to the book, Byron will be hosting a virtual series of coalition conversations focused on centering community engagement and key campus priorities, including executive leadership, enrollment management, research excellence, and more. Registration coming soon. We are thrilled to be gathering in person in April for Compact 24 and will continue to support leadership development during that time. I want to draw your attention to several of those opportunities now. First, Byron and his colleagues with the Engagement Academy will be facilitating a pre-conference institute on addressing leadership challenges and opportunities. 
Naima Watson and Lena Destilio will host a deep dive workshop on becoming a chief engagement officer. Our board president, Mary Grant from Mass Art, will host a campus executives luncheon for presidents, provosts, deans, and vice presidents, focusing on critical issues facing the field. And we will continue to offer peer mentoring and coaching throughout the conference. This year, we will also continue to offer our Resourcing for Success series with the next session on October 10th. If you missed out on sessions last year and need a quick refresher, all previous sessions were recorded and are now available on our website. Based on the interest and response to the series, we're already thinking about what comes next to support resource cultivation and fundraising. I'm also pleased to talk about some of our new partnerships that are under development to continue advancing practice in the field. We're hoping to better uh, to focus on better linking research to practice. And in particular, we're excited to be working with IRSLICE, the International Association for Research on Service Learning and Civic Engagement, to foster new pathways, tools, and networks to bring the latest research in the field to practitioners. Join us at the IRSLICE conference in New Orleans at the end of October to contribute to this collaborative effort. We're also partnering with the Michigan Journal for Community Service Learning to host a virtual discussion with the authors published in their latest issue, which covered everything from promotion and tenure policies to first year learning communities to uncomfortable emotions and service learning courses. Participants will engage with authors directly to gain more insight into not only the findings of each article, but also the methods and process behind the findings. Registration for this November event is coming soon. We're also excited to host a faculty development series. So due to such a positive response to our faculty development webinars last year, I'm happy to announce that Starplex and more will be joining us this year to lead a faculty learning community. Drawing on the book that she co-authored with Marshall Welch, The Craft of Community Engaged Teaching and Learning, this series of six meetings will foster faculty learning about how to integrate community engaged principles, practices, and pedagogies. This learning community is designed to draw on the expertise of both the faculty and the participants alike to build a shared understanding of the principles and practice of community engaged teaching. We have much more in the works related to curriculum and faculty development, including an emerging partnership with the Bonner Foundation and Scott Myers Lipton, Professor Emeritus from San Jose State, to bring teaching social action to our members. Our holistic approach to professional development includes centering racial equity intercultural development and justice initiatives. This year, I'm pleased to tell you a little bit about what we're doing as an organization to continue to live into our core values. I'm thrilled to announce the publication of Campus Compact's latest book, Anti-Racist Community Engagement Principles and Practices, was published in August. The editors of this publication are part of the Equity and Inclusion Fellows team who were co collaborative collaboratively with the Compact to explore the diverse ways that anti-racist community engagement principles can be put into practice on and off campus. There'll be multiple opportunities to engage with the authors this year. First up is a book launch on September 21st. Join us to hear from the editors and other chapter authors about this important resource for the field. The authors will be facilitating a pre-conference pre institute at Compact 24. There will also be virtual gatherings connected to the principles as a series of author talks and workshops. And we will continue to publish blogs that dig into the principles. Last year, we had the blessing of having Castell Sweet serve as our strategy and visioning fellow. During her tenure, Castell engaged members across the compact in investigating the alignment of diversity, equity, and inclusion and civic and community engagement. Her final report, which includes an inventory of institutions advancing operational and structural alignment will be released in October. This will be an excellent resource for the field, particularly in a moment when many of our navigating attacks to DEI and the public purpose of higher education. Another aspect of supporting equity is to think about how we interact with diverse sets of stakeholders, both as individuals and as organizations. This year, we welcome Lisa Schwander, Associate Professor of Social Work from Central Michigan University as our Intercultural Development Fellow. During spring of 2024, she will host a community of practice about different ways of working with intercultural development on campuses, and additionally, for the year, she will work alongside campus compact staff to help us better strategize our own intercultural development, as well as create offerings for the network. I'll now hand it over to Emily to continue telling you about what it means for campus compact to be the professional home for practitioners in the field. 
Thanks, Nicole. I'm Emily Fopp, Professional Development Manager for Campus Compact. The Community Engagement Professionals Credential Program is an opportunity to earn formal recognition for the knowledge and skills you've developed in your career. Applicants start by earning credentials in core areas of community engagement practice and receive digital badges that validate their knowledge, skills, experience, and critical commitments in those areas. We currently offer credentials in nine competency areas. The program is currently open for applications on a rolling basis. We invite you to start an application anytime, or if you'd like to learn more and ask questions, attend an informational session on the first Thursday of every month. This fall begins a needs assessment to support the growth of the credential program in the most effective and impactful way possible. We're looking for input on the format, structure, value, access, and audience for the credentials. This process will include a series of focus groups and a survey to collect stakeholder feedback. The first focus group is scheduled for September 21st. Consider joining us to contribute your ideas and suggestions to help shape the next phase of the credential program coming in 2024. Finally, we have an exciting milestone to celebrate in the credential program. Dr. Jamie Ducar at the University of Pittsburgh received her full certification this year, making her the first to achieve this status in the program. To become fully certified, applicants receive credentials in three essential competency areas and two elective credentials. We want to congratulate Dr. Ducar for her substantial body of work and reflection and thank her for charting a path for others to follow in the years to come. We're excited to see who will be the next fully certified community engagement professional. Next, I'm pleased to share that Campus Compact has partnered with the Haas Center of Public Service at Stanford University to provide leadership for the Pathways of Public Service and Civic Engagement and its associated working group. This partnership means that Campus Compact members can participate in the working group and use the student survey instrument at no cost. The Pathways Framework and Survey advance our understanding of students' interests and predispositions regarding approaches to social change, improve the quality of student programming, understand students' shifting needs and desires over time, and offer a common framework and language for the field. To learn more, attend a Pathways session and networking meeting at Compact 24. Our fall communities of practice start this month. Communities of practice are an opportunity for members to join colleagues across the country to dig deeper into specific areas of community engagement practice. Through discussions, joint activities, resource sharing, and relationship building, participants develop a repertoire of resources, skills, and knowledge to use in their practice. Above all, the communities of practice provide a great space to communicate and share strategies with like-minded individuals from all across the country. This fall, we're offering four communities of practice with very timely topics. They are student success and civic engagement. We're all in this together, building a network of mutualism among young community engaged professionals. Collaboration for better practice, creating synergy across all sectors to better impact the field and strategies to grow the movement of teaching social action. Sessions begin later this month, so register today and start connecting with nationwide colleagues around one of these topics of interest. Next, Matt will share how Compact's innovative work is advancing the field. Thanks, Emily. Uh, my name is Matt Farley, and I support Compact's operations, national service programs, and strategic initiatives. Compact is proud to collaborate with our member institutions and other organizations who are advancing civic and community engagement through innovative practices designed to create change. And I'm happy to highlight a few examples for you. Campus Cogenerate is a collaboration between the Compact and Cogenerate, formerly known as Encore. This initiative focuses on the power generated when older and younger people come together to engage with communities in solving problems, bridging divides, and co-creating a better future. Over the past year, we've connected with several hundred members, uh, representatives, to explore cogeneration problem solving through webinars and communities of practice. Under the leadership of NJ Pierce, a new research paper has been published and is available on our website. We look forward to bringing new initiatives like this in support of Cogenerate in the upcoming year. So stay tuned for more. The campus's, uh, Campus Museums of Service is a joint venture between Compact and the National Museum and Center for Service to advance how we tell our stories, how we celebrate people, programs, and partnerships that are the foundations of our work, how we raise awareness of critical issues facing our communities. I'm excited to share that Alexander Byram from the University of Richmond is joining 
us as a campus exhibit fellow. Alexander will join our existing design team members to create a toolkit for campuses who want to create their own exhibits, and she'll also lead an effort to organize a demonstration exhibit at Compact 24 conference. In our commitment to civic learning and democratic engagement, we'll continue to advance campus engagement and dialogue, deliberation, civil discourse, and bridge building initiatives to help students, faculty, staff, and partners build the skills necessary to bridge divides, collaborate, and take collective action. We continue to expand our resources and training opportunities to support curricular and co-curricular implementation. Two key partners in this work will be Lisa Marie Napoli from Indiana University Bloomington and Nick Longo from Providence College. Lisa Marie will be our bridge building fellow and Nick will return as our dialogue and deliberation fellow. We'll also continue to build upon Nick's publication, Introducing Practicing Democracy, a toolkit for educating civic professionals, which was released uh, this spring jointly with AACNU. This year, we'll expand syllabi, lesson plans, samples for faculty and staff to embed civic education into the student experience. Our coalition, both the people and the institutions who make it up, remain the underpinning of our work. And as you've heard throughout the presentation, each of our activities centers members' voices, priorities, and expertise. As a coalition, we all need to determine ways that we can contribute to our shared vision of higher education as a change maker. More directly, we encourage you to be a field builder when and where you can. We invite you to propose or co-host a coalition conversation on key topics that are emerging in your work. Coalition conversations are one-time or short-term series of thematic conversations on critical issues. For example, this fall we'll host conversations with partners such as Every Campus a Refuge and Unify America. We invite you to co-sponsor an event such as a workshop, institute, or learning exchange that brings together institutions and colleagues through in-person or virtual events. Co-sponsored events have been an important way we've been able to expand professional opportunities and strategic thinking in key areas. For example, our long-term relationship with the Massachusetts Department of Higher Education and campuses throughout New England have led to multiple symposia on civic learning, equity, and anti-racist community engagement, which has then led to the new publication that my esteemed colleague, Dr. Springer mentioned earlier. We invite you to propose a partnership with the Compact that scales campus innovation to a national audience. Promising and best practices in research and practice should be amplified, replicated, and, are, and we are positioned to help. We invite you to co-host a community or network gathering at the Compact 24 conference where colleagues can connect and collaborate on key issues, dig into topics that really matter, and foster connection and belonging. This work of building coalitions, spaces for reflection and critique, and ultimately collective impact has been central to Compact's past and will be in its future. So what are your personal strengths or what areas does your institution wanna make an impact in? What events or activities are you already organizing that can be opened up to colleagues locally, regionally, or nationally? Let us know and we're excited to collaborate with you. And finally, I wanna invite you to contribute to the creation of the 2025 strategic plan. Over the next year, we'll be undertaking a comprehensive member-grounded strategic planning process. We'll be asking you to contribute your ideas, raise challenges and tensions, and engage in building a vision for Compact's next phase. It's hard to believe that 2025, that in 2025, Compact will be celebrating its 40th anniversary, and we're looking forward to celebrating that milestone with you and charting our next evolution. Today, we've shared a lot of specific initiatives and programs underway at Compact, but there's never enough time to cover it all. In partnership with local, regional, and national organizations, we're constantly developing new programs, initiatives, and campaigns. A great way to stay up to date on all things Compact and the biggest issues and trends in civic engagement is to subscribe to our communications, including our new signature monthly publication, Common Cause. In each issue, we're driving or we're diving into a significant issue or trend in the field and packing in best practices, perspectives, and resources to address it. And now I'd like to welcome Bobby back to discuss our advocacy work and federal agenda. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thanks for everyone for sticking with us. We have eight minutes left and I'm going to end on time. Campus Compact announced last year that we would be reinvigorating our policy agenda, taking a more active role in working with federal agencies. And it's been a really busy year. We're excited to share with you today where we're headed and how you can get engaged. 
Since launching the HUD and Higher Engagement Network with our partners at the bottom of this slide, we and forming our 26 member think tank, which includes many of you on this call, we've issued calls to action and engaged many of you on topics like digital equity and increasing the utilization of affordable housing vouchers. As we look towards this year, we're actually gonna be creating more specific initiatives that build on the momentum of where we've seen real energy. This includes addressing the critical issue of foster care youth housing, supporting diverse approaches to addressing affordable housing strategies for campuses, and building better connections between HUD and institutional leaders on the ground with a particular focus on educational pathways and workforce development. We're tapping into the expertise of our members to advance our advocacy efforts. And this includes welcoming two fellows. First, Daniel Tomei, who is the Engaged Civic Learning Program Coordinator at Rutgers Camden. Daniel's going to serve as the Community Service Federal Work Study Fellow. Federal Work Study is a key tool to make higher ed more accessible to students from low-income families and communities, providing them with meaningful work-based learning experiences and providing necessary person power to advance key community engagement priorities. During his time as a fellow, Daniel's gonna focus on understanding the needs of our field, reviewing the current resources available, and creating new and updated resources that can help build the capacity of community service federal work study programs on our campuses across the country. Next, Reggie Blaylock will serve as our foster care youth housing fellow. Reggie is a 35 year veteran of the California State University system and a proven leader in advancing innovative practices to support foster care youth through housing and student success programs. Under Reggie's leadership, we're gonna be working closely with HUD to identify what's working, where pain points lie and what change is needed at both the policy and resource levels to create viable solutions for providing housing for this very vulnerable population. To kick off our work in this area, we're soliciting interest to participate in an action spurring retreat, which will set the agenda for us for the year. If you're interested in this, please reach out to Reggie or myself. And while these two issues are critically important, we're gonna be taking a holistic and comprehensive approach and stepping up our voice and advocacy in Washington this is a top level priority for Compact. To support our efforts, we have teamed up with Washington Navigators, a firm with deep knowledge and experience in supporting higher ed. Along with our members, our board of directors and collaborators, we'll be focusing on three primary areas. First, raising the awareness of the role of higher ed in addressing critical issues facing our communities, working to secure funding to advance civic and community engagement, and providing you, our members, with briefings and information on federal issues important to our field. We're excited to announce today two opportunities to engage in this agenda this coming fall. First, we will be holding our inaugural Campus Compact Community Engagement Policy and Impact Presidential Summit, which is a real mouthful, in Washington, DC on November 14th and 15th. Formal invitations will be coming in the next few weeks, but please reach out if you're interested in exploring this. During this summit, presidents will engage with White House officials, agency leaders, and congressional members to support President Biden's call for increased participatory public engagement. And we're going to be there to talk about the critical role higher ed can and should play. We'll also be launching a new regular policy briefing series for our members. Our first one will be held on October 11th and registration will open next week. During this first session, we're gonna focus on the FY24 budget trying to understand the impact of legislation related to community service, federal work study, AmeriCorps, and other civic engagement priorities. We're gonna dive into questions like, will congressionally directed spending or earmarks survive? We hope you'll join us and get engaged. While much of our agenda is focused on identifying new resources and pathways for elevating the role of higher ed, we are also ensuring that we are utilizing our voice and capacity as Campus Compact to defend against the threats to our mission and core values. We are working in partnership with close colleagues at PEN America, ACE, Natahi, and many others to collectively build a stronger defense system for higher ed. Over the past three years, we've seen a massive expansion in bills and legislative actions aimed at censoring learning and what can be taught, eliminating DEI, resources and offices, and limiting free expression. At Campus Compact, we're contributing to this fight by creating space and fostering dialogue. For example, we're supporting a convening group called Education for All, a group of presidents led by Mike Gavin at Delta College. We're providing resources where we actively work with partners to bring toolkits and information to our campus leaders to help them navigate these very challenging times on the ground. And we're sharing our stories and impact because narrative change is a significant tool in this and Campus Compact is committed to being a force for positive 
elevating the incredible stories and perspectives with the students at the center. This is going to take all of us and we look forward to working with you. And last, but definitely not least, we cannot wait for Compact 24. I think that's been very clear throughout this presentation as I think we've probably announced an institute about 14 times, but that should give you a signal of how much we're gonna pack into this conference. This year's conference will begin a new tradition for Campus Compact, hosting an annual gathering of the field and members. This spring, we're looking forward to being in Denver, Colorado, and in 2025, we'll be in Atlanta, Georgia. And right now we're beginning to look at where we'll be in 2026. We've had an incredible response thus far to Compact 24 with hundreds already registered. There are many ways to get involved. First, consider sponsoring. There's a great lift of benefits and levels that range from 2,500 to 25,000. Apply to win an impact award for your outstanding work. We have updated this year's impact awards to allow for teams and centers to apply. Present, the deadline is tomorrow, but reach out to Emily Falk who has been on today's call if you need help or have some questions. Register. The early bird deadline is December 15th. We'll be announcing lots of highlights for our agenda in the next month or two, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining us today, and a very, very special thanks to Molly and Caitlin, who have worked behind the scenes to make this happen. Thank you so much, and we look forward to working with you.